using your song books, we're going to start with number 800. Number 800. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Scripture reading this morning will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 26. I'll be reading from the New American Standard. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it, but God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, Father, for today and for all the many blessings that you have given to us. Father, thank you for this time that we have to come together as your people, to learn about you, to study your word, to sing praises to your name, and to honor you in all that we do. Father, I pray that you will be with us as we go throughout the service. Help us to give, give our full attention to you, give our full self and praise to you that you deserve. Father, help us to worship in spirit and in truth as we go throughout the rest of this service, all throughout today and every day of our life. Father, I pray that you will be with uh, all those who have lost loved ones. Father, be with those who have gone through surgeries, those who are in nursing homes and hospitals, who are sick and who are suffering. Comfort them and be with all of them, Father. Father, we thank you for our elders, our deacons, our leaders of the church, our state, and our country. We pray that you will be with all of them and all the decisions that they make, that they be for our benefit and for your glory. 
Father, we thank you most importantly for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you'd like to mark the song after the lesson will be number 922. 922 will be the song of invitation. And before the lesson, we'll sing number 453. Let's please stand for this song. Uh, been a busy weekend, what can I say? It's good to see you, glad you're here this morning, and I pray that you're doing well and that your family is doing well. There are several on our prayer list, and I would encourage you, please keep note of those, keep them in your prayers, um, and ask God to watch over each of them. And as it's already been said, we're glad to see some back who've recently had surgeries and glad that they're doing well. Um, Please continue to keep James Smith in your prayers. As you may have known, he had two surgeries on Thursday, and he is doing well. My wife is with him this morning, kind of watching over him as he continues to recover from his surgery. Those of us who are Christians here this morning enjoy a special privilege. When each of us put Christ on in baptism, something was done. The Lord added you to the number of the saved. You became a part of what we call the church, but also what Scripture calls the body of Christ. And Christ, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, is the head of that body. He orchestrates what goes on within that body. And because he is the head of the body, there are certain things that he has done and continues to do for that body. One of the things that he's already done for so many of us is he saved us. Another thing that we find that he does is he nourishes and he cherishes his body, the church. And then 
There's a third thing I want you to consider, and that is that he puts his spirit within his church to give it life. But those of us who are part of that body, we have certain attitudes and certain responsibilities that we're called upon to have and to carry out as a part of this body of Christ. In our reading this morning, Hunter shared with us from the writing of the Apostle Paul there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a few of those that I would like for you to consider this morning. And as we walk through these verses, and I'm going to back up to verse 12 and 13 because that's also a part of it, but I, I knew that the reading was rather long, so I didn't add that in. We're going to see some things that we, as a body of Christ, as individual Christians, need to do for one another in caring for each other, in carrying out our responsibilities. And I hope that as we engage in this study that you will see within it some of the things that the elders are asking of us, encouraging us to do, and that is to become more involved in this body of which we're a part, and also to encourage others to do the same. So what is it that he begins by saying? One of the first things that he tells us is that we need each other. Let me say that again. We need each other. And Paul kind of works through that as he describes some of these things. You probably have heard the phrase, e pluribus unum. It is, the, <clears throat> it is on the great seal of the United States. It is found on much of the coinage that you carry around in your pocket on a daily basis. It is a Latin phrase that has an important meaning because it's considered one of the mottos of the United States. But do you know what those words mean? Some of you who are older probably do. You may have learned it in school. I dare say that a lot of the younger ones have no clue. It means this, of many, one. Simple, of many, one. And that is what Paul is saying in these verses about the church. The church is made up of many, but those many function as one. Look at what he says there in verse 12 of chapter 12. He says, For even as the body is one and yet has many members... And all of the members of the body, though they are many, are one body. So is Christ. You and I are a part of a greater whole. We belong to an organism, as I've already shared with you, whose head is Jesus Christ. And our responsibility that God has given to each of us is to represent Christ to the world. That's what we are called to do as His body. We represent Christ <clears throat> to those we encounter every day of our lives. And we become a part of this body. All in the same way. There in verse 13, He tells us. He says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free. And he says, we were all made to drink of one spirit. So there is a unity within this body, even though we are made up of many members. Now having said that, the point that Paul wants us to understand is that all of this, the structure within the church, is the result of the careful arrangement of God's of what God has designed according to His will. If you look down in verse 18, I'm jumping a little bit, but in verse 18 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as He desired. Folks, God did not haphazardly just suddenly throw you all together into this body. No. He planned it. It was according to His perfect will for each of us to be a part of this body as we are here today. 
And as a part of this body, each of us has a responsibility not only to the body overall, but to each one as individual members. And no one in this body, no member should think that any of you are less important than anyone else. Every single one of you are vitally important to this body and to its work. Look at the way Paul puts it beginning in verse 15. He says there, if the foot says, because I am not the hand, is it for this reason any the less a part of the body? If the ear says, because I am not an eye, I'm not a part of the body. Is it for this reason any the less a part of the body? And then he asked a question. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Now think about that for just a moment. Each of us need our feet. And and as much as we need our hands, we need our ears as much as we need our eyes. You walked into this building using your feet this morning. You used your hands to either push the door open or to turn the knob to get in. You used your hands to grab those little communion cups. You used your feet to bring you to the seat you're now sitting in. And you are using your ears to listen to what hopefully I'm saying. And you're using your eyes to look at the screens on both sides, to follow with us in our singing and also in the outline that is before you. You see, you depend upon the various parts of your own physical body, do you not? And if one of those parts is not functioning as it should, it kind of affects the rest of the body, does it not? And Paul asks a very important question here in verse 19. He says, if they were all one member, where would the body be? If you were just a giant foot, how would you function? You couldn't. You depend on the other parts of the body to take a part in what has to be done just for your life to to progress. But having said that, I said the, the basis of this is that we need each other. So I want you to consider something for just a minute. Each of you is an important part of this body. Think about what different members within this body of Christians does. There are those of you who make phone calls. You send out get well cards. You send cards of encouragement to different members of this congregation who are listed in our bulletin or maybe who you personally know about who are in need of a little bit of encouragement or prayer on their behalf. Not only that, there are those of you who cook meals and deliver care packages to see that those who may be shut in or those who've lost a loved one are cared for and that they know that they're cared for and considered important. There are those of you who consistently go before the throne of God in prayer on behalf of so many of us and on behalf of the work here and across the world as the gospel is carried out. Your Work in praying for the saints is important. There are those of you who take time to clean this building. There are those of you who mow the lawn. There are those of you who maintain our buses. There are those of you who keep the heat and the air going for us and the lights working. There are those of you who have put out the mask. You put out the communion cups. You clean the the songbooks. You do all of these things. You print our bulletins. There are those of you who shepherd us. And those of you who serve us, there are those who preach and those who teach. There are those who operate our sound system and our PowerPoint and our radio to make our services possible on radio, TV, and social media. And thank you, Evan, and anybody else that works in that booth, because I have the greatest of admiration for those folks. Until you've sat where they sat, you have no clue what it takes just to do what we do here today. So if it ever messes up a little bit, realize they're up there doing everything they can to make it work right. But every one of you, every single one of you are important. And we cannot say, as Paul talks about in verse 21, I don't need you because we need you. I'm reminded of a statement that General Eisenhower 
made to a, 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 a a general of lesser rank in World War II when that general made the comment about a certain soldier, he's just a private. And Dwight D. Eisenhower reprimanded that general and he said to him, the privates are the one who are, ones who are winning the war for us. Let us never think that just because a person in this auditorium comes and sits in a certain spot, maybe they don't teach a Bible class, maybe they don't do things that we see that they're not important. That's not true. Every single one of us are important. And we need to communicate that on a regular basis to every member that no one thinks they're forgotten or neglected. So we need each other. But a second thing that I think Paul is saying here is this, is that we should also see that we respect one another, that we recognize what each other is doing and that we uphold one another. That's not the mindset that the world would have us to adopt. The world says, no, you're trying to get ahead in life and because you're trying to get ahead in life, anybody in front of you is in your way. So you go around them, you go over them or you go through them, but you do whatever you have to do to get ahead of them. You minimize them. You dismiss anything they're doing and you elevate your own efforts and your own accomplishments, but ignore theirs. How often have we heard it said, we live in a dog-eat-dog world? Well, that's the kind of world we live in when people operate by that philosophy. I get ahead by beating you out. I get ahead by pushing you out of the way. I get ahead by ignoring you so that I can accomplish what I want. And what Paul says is, no, that is not the way. That's the way Satan would have us to think about each other. That's the way Satan would have us to function. But it is not the way that God would have us to function. You see, as Paul said, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We do need each other. So what are we to do? We're to show honor toward one another. This is what Paul is teaching. As a matter of fact, when it comes to our physical bodies, he uses that as an illustration. If you'll notice there, beginning in verse 23, he says, the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And there at the end of verse 23, the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. And then in the beginning of verse 24, he says, the presentable parts need no special treatment. He says, we recognize the ones that sometimes get neglected, get forgotten. In Romans 12, verse 10, Paul made this statement. He says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And then he said, at the end of that, give preference to one another in honor. Look at Philippians chapter 2. We're to consider others as better than ourselves. To look out not only for our own interest, but also for the interest of others. You see, that's what we do as a part of the body of Christ. Paul's reasoning, why? Why do this? Why is it so important? He tells us, he says, so that there may be no division in you, as he points out in verse 25, and that the members may have the same care one for another. We let each person know you're important, you're needed, you're cared for, you're loved, you're appreciated. The last thing that I think we can draw from this this morning is something else Paul is saying, and that is that we must sympathize with each other in the good and in the bad. What affects one of us affects all of us. Or as Paul puts it, if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever stubbed your toe? Have you ever mashed a finger? <laughs> Maybe driving a nail or just who knows doing what, something falls on it? Did the rest of your body just say, oh, that's no problem, just go on, I'm, I'm fine? Or did suddenly a certain cry of pain issue from your lips? Did your brain suddenly detect, I'm hurting? Did your uninjured hand suddenly grasp for the finger that was hurting? Did you turn and walk away? Maybe jumping up and down or doing something to indicate you were in pain. Yes, your body reacted to what had happened to one member. 
Ever had a headache? Stomach ache? Did you just go on about your day as if nothing were wrong? Probably not. Some of you may get those migraine headaches where the only thing you can do is go to a dark room, close the door, pull the shades, and say, don't even knock on the door. Don't come in. Just leave me alone. Because the rest of your body is saying, I can't function until my head stops hurting. You, your, your stomach is upset. You can't function because you're having to make trips back and forth to the bathroom. The rest of your body acknowledges that. When one member suffers, Paul says, all of the members suffer with it. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, Paul says, weep with those who weep. And this is what we do when our brothers and our sisters in Christ lose a loved one. Or when we find that a, 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 a fellow Christian receives a life-threatening diagnosis. We stop and we pray for that individual. We show that we care for them. When somebody, we suddenly learn that somebody has lost their job. What can we do to help out? How can we help you get through this? When one member suffers, all members suffer with it. But then there's the other side of that. And that is, if one of us has reason to rejoice, then all of us should rejoice. Or as Paul puts it here, if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Romans 12, verse 15, first part of that. There he says, rejoice with those who rejoice. And so that's what we do. We rejoice when a, someone puts Christ on in baptism. We rejoice when a member receives a promotion or is a recognized for an accomplishment. We rejoice when prayers are answered on behalf of a brother or a sister in Christ. We rejoice when we see others walking in Christ faithfully. And you could add to both of those lists. But you see, as Christians, we are a part of God's wonderful design, the church. And none of us are here by mistake or happenstance. No, it's a part of God's design. It's a part of what He chose to do before the foundation of the world, as Paul puts it in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, when He chose us in Christ so that when we were obedient to the gospel, He added us to those who were being saved. He has planned to bring us together as one in the body of Christ, as members of that body. And if we are to function as God intended us to function, then we have to realize that we need each other, that we need to show respect to one another for who each person is within the body of Christ, and that we need to sympathize with one another whether it's for good or for ill, for the things are to sympathize with their needs, their sufferings. Let me ask you this morning. If you're a person who's either watching or you're here today and you're not a Christian, I want to encourage you to become obedient to Christ. To put him on in baptism so that he might wash away your sins. And even more than that, so that you will know the joy and encouragement that comes from belonging to something that is greater than any one of us. Because you see, you belong to something that is eternal. Something that has eternal reward. And there will be, I promise you, there will be no greater rejoicing than when we all stand together on that last day with the one who has saved us and made us his own. Don't you want to be a part of a family that's on its way home? I hope so. And if we can assist you in that this morning, if you need to respond to his invitation, we invite you to come as together we stand and sing. Yeah.
preparation for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 342. 342. We saw thee not when thou didst come. time for us to partake of the Lord's Supper. If you don't have the, the communion, if you'll raise your hands, someone will get it to you. Okay. I'm reading today from Luke 22, verses 19 and 20. And he took, and he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for thee. Shall we pray? Dear God, we thank you so much for your sacrifice, and we thank you for, your, for this bread, which represents your body. Lord, as we partake it, may we partake it in a manner that is well-pleasing to thee. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Shall we again pray? Like manner, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup, the fruit of the vine, which does represent the blood that was given for us on, on the cross. We are so grateful for, for your sacrifice. And Lord, as we retake this, may we always look to thee for your blessings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
this time we, we have an opportunity to give back to, to uh, God what he has blessed us with. God has blessed us with so much, and, and uh, we have this opportunity now to give back to him. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for blessing this church here. And, Lord, as the monies we give back may be used to further your kingdom here on earth and in this community and all around the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good to see everybody this morning. Uh, closing song will be number 957. After we sing this song, be led in prayer by Lynn Killebrew. Let's stand for this song, please. in heaven we thank thee for life itself and for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us <clears throat> we thank thee father for your love for your son that gave his life that we might have life everlasting we thank thee father for the opportunity we have today to meet together to sing songs of praise to thee and to worship thee and <clears throat> to fellowship with one another to give encouragement we pray father for all of those that have lost loved ones we ask thee to Comfort them that you alone can. Be, we pray, Father, for those that are sick, those that are scheduled for surgery. Pray for the doctors and nurses and, and, and that all will go well with them and they will soon be back with us once again. <clears throat> we thank you, Father, for your word that guides us throughout life and help us, Father, to study and meditate that we will live our lives well-pleasing unto thee. <clears throat> we thank you, Father, for um, our families and we pray that you will watch over and bless them all and uh, guide them in your word. Father, dismiss us now <clears throat> with love in our hearts for one another, and that we, we will realize that we are not in this alone, but we need each other. And forgive us of our sins, and we pray in Christ's name. Amen. This has been the worship services of the Waverly Church of Christ. Your speaker this morning, Jeff Keel. Your song leader, Robert Martin. Join us each Sunday at this time for this broadcast. It originated live and was sponsored by the Waverly Church of Christ. Visit our website at www.waverlychurchofchrist.org and there you will find today's lesson 
and many more lessons from God's Word, the Bible. Also, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash wavcoc and help us spread and share the good news of Jesus Christ. If you want to worship with us in person, we are located at 438 West Main Street in Waverly, Tennessee, and from there we bid you a very blessed good morning. Oh.